Today we listen to the gospel for the sixth Sunday after Epiphany, which is part of these supply masses that we offer just before the last Sunday of the year, which will be next Sunday before we enter into the new season of Advent and the whole cycle begins all over again. And as we prepare to come to the end of this liturgical year, the church reminds us always of the second coming of Christ, even as St. Paul reminded his hearers in Thessalonica uh, that they should be prepared and ready because they have no fear, because they're living the life of faith as they joyfully await the coming of our Lord and will escape the day of his wrath when he comes to bring judgment upon the earth. What we find here is St. Paul makes an allusion to their faith. The gospel makes an allusion to faith in that the faith is considered as these wonderful things, treasure hidden, a woman who searches, a woman who prepares the dough and it grows up. But the faith is something that is given to us as a gift, but it's a gift that must be demonstrable and it must allow to mature in the soul of the Christian. And so we are considering this wonderful gift, the gift of faith. Today we make commemoration of St. Felix, who, as a man in the 13th century, was raised up by God to do extraordinary things, and he was called to live by faith. Just a moment on St. Felix. St. Felix is the product of what we call the Age of Faith, and this is certainly the theme continued. The 12th century was called the Age of Faith. Now, the 12th century, as we know, is the 1100s, and it would be during this time in the 1100s that Europe would finally begin to settle down. Most of all of Europe has now been Christianized, and so it's a time now for a flowering of faith. Even the dreaded Danes and the dreaded Vikings are coming under the gospel, and they're being Christianized. And so all of Europe is pretty much at peace as far as the Christian faith in these northern countries of Europe. As you've heard me say before, the last holdout, and it always surprises me when I hear this, the last holdout in Europe to become a Christian country uh, is the country of Lithuania. The Lithuanians held out, and the king was not baptized until the year 1496, rather late uh, in the whole scheme of things. And so the Lithuanians held out pretty strong in their paganism. But the rest of Europe had been Christianized. And so in the uh, 12th century, there was this wonderful living out of the Christian faith, which had a wonderful flowering in virtue. This is the time where chivalry is considered chic. Uh, to be a man of virtue, to be a woman of virtue, was considered fashionable. And so today, as we glamorize sin and we glamorize bad behavior as the norm, well, in the 12th century, it was just the opposite. It was goodness, it was virtue, it was holiness. All of these things were extolled as what, what it was meant to live in a Christian society. And the beauty of that age of faith is that it flowered. It had a marvelous flowering in the next century, the 13th century, the 1200s. This is the age of the great saints, Dominic, Francis, today St. Felix, and so many others that are the product of this generation of faith which brought forth this wonderful flowering of faith. And so what we find is that when the seed is there, when the faith is germinating in a family or in a country, it will always bring forth good fruit. One of the things we listen to in the Old Testament, and we see it certainly lived out in the New, and in the New Dispensation of Grace, and the lesson that the Jews had to learn, it was a hard lesson for them to learn, and sadly they had to learn it over and over and over again. But when they obeyed the commandments of God, everything went well. It went well politically, it went well socially, it even went well with nature. Everything cooperated, and the land brought forth the milk and honey, it brought forth the bounty. But when Israel began to disobey God, and why did Israel disobey God? Well, same reason our own generation disobeys God. There are things that are more important. There are things that are more lovely. There are things that are enticing us away. And when Israel disobeys God, God brings a judgment upon them. And the judgment over and over again in the Old Testament, we want to think of fire and brimstone, you know, but Sodom and Gomorrah. 
But that's not usually uh, the norm for judgment in Israel. The norm for judgment in Israel was that they were taken over politically. God surrendered them to the leaders that they wanted. And so they suffered politically. And when they suffered politically, the whole nation was brought low. Everything was brought low. And the people were oppressed. And eventually the outsiders come in and they, they take over the country. The Jews are taken away into captivity. This happens two or three times. And yet Israel will come to that point where they are so humiliated that they will turn back to God. They, in essence, echo the words that were said by our president when, when he went, I believe, in one of the cities he went to. What else do you have to lose? And so for the Jews, there was nothing else for them to lose. They had lost everything. And so they turned back to God. And when they turned back to God, it was a season of blessing. There was a flowering. And so what we find is that God rewards righteousness. God always punishes wickedness, not only in the individual, but also in society itself, in the government of society, in the culture. And so everything suffers. And so just as in the, 13th, in the 12th century, there was this living out of the age of faith, Christians began to live their faith in wonderful ways, so everything was blessed. And even the land was blessed. It was during this time, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th century, even in the very earliest part of the 14th century, that Europe underwent a tremendous blessing. We don't often hear about this. There were vineyards, imagine this, there were vineyards where they were growing grapes to make wine all the way up in northern Scotland. This was a time when there was, modernists would say it was global warming, but it was a time when there was a warming trend. And so everything was flowering. Every, the whole land itself was bringing forth bounty. Uh, the little uh, monastery way up in the north of Scotland where the Transalpines are, uh, they're on a little remote island. It's rather desolate looking if you ever visited their website. Father Michael is up there. And the website, the, the island looks pretty desolate. But in the 11th and 12th and 13th century, they were growing crops there. Barley and wheat was being grown on this island. There were vineyards in the other islands, something that was unheard of or is unheard of today because it's too far north. But in those centuries, everything came to life. Everything was flowering. And so the people obeyed God and the land was blessed. Even the very land, the dirt itself was blessed. And when we disobeyed God, then everything begins to crumble. And so it was in Europe and so it is even in our own time today. And so we consider these great saints that God raised up today, Saint Felix, who along with Saint John of Marta, founded by divine inspiration, the order of the Holy Trinity, the Trinitarians. Our Blessed Lady would often visit St. Felix and encourage him in this good work in which they were to give themselves in ransom if need be so that others might be set free from the yoke of the Saracens. But also Our Lady emphasized to St. Felix for those who are being held captive by the evil of sin. And so it was seen necessary by God to establish this wonderful community that just catches on fire with a zeal for God and for the salvation of souls. And so God, as it were, wanted to keep everything blessed for the people. But gradually in the 13th and 14th century, the Renaissance come, people begin to turn away from God, just like the Jews. They found other things to divert their attention. And so they began to give themselves over to worldliness and everything begins to crumble, everything begins to go down. And so in our own day, we take the same lesson. We consider how God has blessed us all through the ages and through the years. And we find ourselves as the second, some even the third generation of people who have turned away. Uh, they've turned away from God. And so right after World War II, there was a flowering, yes, there had been a flowering of faith during the time of the Depression. Once again, what did you have to lose? And so people were turning back to God. And so we find that the war comes, and after the war, there was a, a prosperity in the church, not just Catholic, even Protestant churches. People went to church. There was a, a civilization blessing. The society was somewhat blessed. But then what happens? Well, in the 60s come, we found things more interesting. We found other diversions. We found things that were more fun. And so little by little, everything begins to crumble. 
people began to turn away from God. And what's the result? Well, ta-da, we're living in the result. And so what is the solution? The solution is always to turn back to God. Individually, each of us to turn back to God, within our families to turn back to God, within our communities to turn back to God, within our nation to turn back to God. And as we honor God, God will honor us. That's one of the beauties we, on Monday, we offer this little novena to the Holy Infant Jesus. And in the city of Prague, there's that beautiful saying over the original statue, and it says, the more you honor me, the more I'll honor you. And that's a beautiful saying. It's also a very biblical saying. But the more we show honor to God, the more we bless God, the more God in turn blesses us. And how do we bless God? Well, the scriptures tell us today, by living out our faith. He commends the faith of the Thessalonians because their faith was not just in their head, it wasn't just in their lips. They lived the faith, and that's what they did in the 13th and 12th century. They lived the faith. And so we pray that God give us strength to live the faith in all that we do, in all of our actions, so that our land might truly be blessed and that God will give us those to rule over us that are pleasing in his sight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.